Hello Pranksters, Christian the Havercard Man coming back at you with another deck review today. The place you go to find a new deck to play or to see if that one guy at Locals is playing a viable deck. And today we are going to be doing my review on Salamigrates. But before I get to tossing some salads, be sure to check out links down below to the podcast or the Haver Card Cast, I should say, my social media, the other channels I'm involved in, like the Coalition Scrubs and Team Chaos Stream, as well as all of the other creators I'm involved with. They're all wonderful people. You guys should go show all of them some love. They do some awesome work, so be sure to go check them all out. And now, let's go ahead and gallop into today's Salamigrate deck review. So starting off, like always, we'll go ahead and get going with the deck summary. This deck is really just based around Fire Cybers Monster, that, or fire cybers monsters that love to bounce back from the graveyard and keep their opponents stuck in the graveyard. It really centers around reincarnation link summoning with their fire effect monsters and bouncing materials around to control the board and keep advantage on their side of the field while they push for damage until they find an opening to just crush their opponent once and for all. So with that being said, let's head on into the pros and cons of this deck. So for the pros in normal review fashion, we're going to do this first. This, this specific strategy is fairly budget. Uh, if you guys want to see a deck profile, comment down below and let me know. Uh, the majority of the cards really do just come from a structure deck that you can just buy three of and you'll get most of the cards. There are other cards you can get from other structure decks, but honestly, you'd be better off just buying the singles. Probably for all of these, to be honest, you'd be a lot cheaper. Uh, unless you really want the extra cards for whatever reason, you can definitely go that way too. It doesn't matter too much. At the very least, you can just buy the three main Soul Burner structure decks and then get whatever singles you need after that. And I think you'll be pretty much set for getting a budget sell a great deck. Um, this deck is not only consistent, but also consistently recurrable. It really loves to just bounce stuff back around. It keeps resources going all the time. It's really good at just disrupting the opponent and stopping them from getting the resources they need. So it's just so easy to be able to stay on top in terms of advantage. Salamigrates are also fairly easy to learn with a fairly linear line of play. So it's really good for new and returning players to be able to pick up the deck, learn it, and be able to figure out their way in the meta and find other decks that they maybe want to play. It's definitely a really good stepping stone uh, and this deck has also been popular for several formats now so you will definitely be able to find hundreds of deck profiles for this and combo tutorials and just all sorts of different content based around this because it is such a popular deck and it's been here for a good chunk of time now so it's definitely easy enough to find stuff on this deck now onto the downsides of playing this deck, the last note I mentioned from the pro section was the popularity of this deck. This is also a downside for the deck because now everyone knows how to play against it. Uh, the deck has been around for long enough that it's so easy to know when to counter the deck, like when to play your hand traps, you know, stuff like your Ash Blossoms, your Imperms, your Nibirus. You know when to play all that stuff now to get the maximum disruption out of it because the deck has been around for so long. Uh, same thing goes with the linear line of play for this deck. The fact that it is so linear makes it so easy to know what's going on with the strategy and to know really when you need to counter. So it definitely really helpful. Uh, several of the main cards for the strategy are also hit on the Forbidden and Limited list, such as Mirage Stallio being banned, Gazelle and Salamigrate Circle being limited to one. Hits the consistency of this deck to a pretty good degree and really just makes it a little bit harder to play and keeps your engine size that much smaller. The usual Salamigrate engine is already small to begin with. Uh, it just it lowers the consistency a little bit, be like that. But at the same time, it also opens up room for alternate techs or disruptions. So it really is kind of a pro and a con at the same time. Um, and there are several other archetypes in the current format that have power crept Salamigrates, uh, such as like Eldledge, Adam Emancipator, you know, all these like big powerhouse decks coming out have really kind of just power crept Salamigrate as a deck overall. Even stuff like Altergeist has kind of taken over. Um, the spot of Salamigrates being that kind of tempo, like top tempo deck of the format. So, so there, that's the boring part over for you guys. This was just the croutons on this very complex salad. So let's dig into the garden to farm out some wins. So taking a look at the consistency of this deck, I'm going to rate this as an 8.5 out of 10. This deck really relies on cards like Side Up Mining, Lady Debug to be able to search out their main combo pieces, and of course Salamigrate Circle technically goes into that too, but that's like a one of. Uh, these cards can also ex be used to extend their plays, so if they just want to be able to search out an extender and get whatever they need, or like Lady Debug being the normal summon for the turn can link off into your Salamigrate Bay Lynx and be able to search through your Sanctuary. It's just, they're easy to start co uh, combo plays for salads, and it really allows 
uh, the engine to be super small because it is so searchable. So you really don't need that many Salamagrate cards in your deck, just enough to be able to search them out with stuff like your Silent Mining, Lady Debug, uh, be able to draw them off of the Flame Buffalo after you link it off, stuff like that. It's definitely fairly easy to get your plays going with this deck because it's so easy to search everything, praying that you don't get ashed and being able to actually go off with your combos. So we'll go and move on to the Resistance now, which is a 7.5 out of 10. A little bit lower on this one. It doesn't really... Uh, if the deck doesn't draw Parallel Exceed, it will most likely die to the Nibiru. Because if this deck gets Nibiru, it just can't survive. But if they get, if they get the Parallel Exceed and they can, you know, get their Link 1 Baylanx out, get their Parallel Exceeds and be able to go straight into a Trap Tricks Flesia to have that Trap Tricks, or have the Gravedigger's Trap Hole ready. And if they can't do that, that they're just pretty much going to die to the Nibiru. Other disruptions, for the most part, it can kind of play through, like the Ash and the Ghost Ogre, the Imperm, stuff like that. They can play through those occasionally. Um, it really depends on the hand they draw, but well-placed disruption against this deck definitely hurts it a lot and really decreases its ceiling. Uh, and there's a decent chance that they will have extenders to play through disruption, but it might not always be enough to get to the plays they actually wanted to get to, and it could definitely really hurt them in the long run. And once again, people are more aware of how to hand trap this deck in the current format just because of how long the deck's been around and how much love it's been given. Like, I'm still seeing new deck profiles for this thing all the time. That just shows how much people love this deck, but it also shows that there's a lot of people that know how to play against this deck. So there's always new things coming out uh, for the deck, or new techs coming out that try to, like, kind of fix the problems that it has. But I think Resistance is really one of them, and it definitely keeps coming up a lot. So definitely something to look out for. Sneaking off next onto the power of this deck, we are sitting at a 5.5 out of 10. This deck can run the access code combo to help close out the game. Playing into things like your update jammer, which you can then link off into your access code to make him be able to attack twice and make him a big enough body that you can potentially go for game. You'll also have more link monsters in the graveyard that you can banish off for his effect to get some pops. So it is definitely possible for this deck to be able to close out games, but it requires like very specific combos and just like very specific stuff. The deck on its own doesn't really do it. It needs some outside help. And it's not even, even with that outside help, it's not always enough to actually close out the game. There's a good chance that the opponent will still be able to be alive at the end of that turn. This deck is really oriented for the grind match and being able to disrupt your opponent turn after turn after turn just to keep the advantage on your side of the field and be able to stop them from popping off to the extent that they want to. Um, but it, it does have that potential to be able to close out games relatively quickly. So now for the disruption of this deck, I am going to give this an 8 out of 10. It does have an archetype backward disruption in both Salamigrate Rage and Salamigrate Roar, both of which are searchable, uh, either by dumping to the graveyard with a gazelle and then bringing it back with Sunlight Wolf, or just having other means to get into them. It's really not hard to pull these cards out, super easy to get them and be able to set them in your back row and make them live. Once again, they are searchable and reusable. That's the nice thing is you can keep reusing them, bringing them back from the graveyard and playing them over and over again. Uh, really easy to recycle them, and you can also recycle Ash Blossom with your Sunlight Wolf as well, so that's an extra disruption, so you have a potential to recycle three different disruptions every turn, one of which can honestly destroy up to four cards if you're playing that build, I guess. Not a lot of people play the Pyro Phoenix. I personally love him, but I understand why people don't. Um, and there's just so much stuff it can do. It can also set up the Abyss Dweller. Uh, you get additional disruption from the Code Talker package inside a Conflict after you link off your microcoder in hand to go into a Code Talker monster. You can just search that Sign of Conflict from deck. You know what? I'm starting to think this needs a higher rating. Let's go ahead and bump that 8 up into a 9. And just to add a little cherry on top of this now very confusing salad, Prohibit Snake can also give the deck some much needed help in the battle phase by being able to bounce the opposing monster back to the hand. And then after that, it can also help recur some more resources to keep on grinding. And I mean, just like, what can't this deck reuse? So, that being said, we'll go and talk about the flexibility now, sitting at an 8 out of 10. And the credit for this score goes entirely to the engine size of Salamigrates. Since the engine size is so small, it really allows you to be super malleable with the deck building technique. And being able to throw in all these different, different techs into the deck to be able to get some spice in there 
and be able to throw in some interesting new ways to play and being really innovative with the deck. I've seen a whole bunch of different combos, let's you know, like the Code Talker stuff, just general cyber support, you know, things like that. There's always new things coming out that really does help improve this deck. Parallel XE has probably been one of the biggest bo boosts this deck has seen in a while, and it's definitely incredible to see them getting new things all the time, since most of their big pieces have been hit on the Forbidden Limit list. It definitely is cool to still see it being a viable strategy even after all that damage. So... And once again, like I said, since this engine size is so small, it definitely makes it so much easier to play other engines to raise the ceiling of this deck. The main salad plays are very linear and usually end up the same, but any extenders after that will really just help you do all sorts of different crazy things. Uh, like I said, relies on extenders to go further, uh, Parallax, Eid, Kotaker, Hammond Snake, etc. All that stuff is just insane at raising the power level of this deck. And there's most likely going to be more support cards in the future. Like, I'm not going to lie. There's there's going to be new cyber support that's going to come out. And it's just going to, like, blow this deck out of the water. And I'm just, I'm waiting for it to happen. So, now on to the last section of this deck here. Or the second to last section. We have the budget, which is a 7 out of 10. Depending on the build and play style, this definitely can be pretty good cheap. But when you play it, the cheap version, it's usually not as competitive. Um, it definitely still can do some damage to the meta, but a good majority of the cards, like I said, are cheap. But then you look at stuff like your Axis Code and Triple Tactics Talents can cost an extra buck to be able to keep up with the meta. And of course, if you're playing anything like Dogmatica or your Red Eyes Dragoon, if you're playing any of that for any reason, you definitely have to worry about that kind of stuff. Just go with what build suits you. And really, any budget for this deck will be fun to play, and you can definitely be able to stand out and hold yourself against the meta to a degree. So... Alright, so after finally ramming all the numbers together and dividing them by 6, we end up with a total score of 7.6 out of 10, which overall is not the worst rating a deck could have. This definitely does sit at least at that rogue tier in terms of the meta, and most likely it's probably more like a tier 2. It definitely still holds its own in the game and can still keep up for the most part, but at the same time you're still seeing new decks coming out all the time that are just constantly power creeping this deck and bringing down its ceiling. Well, not necessarily bringing down its ceiling, but raising the overall ceiling of the game, and this deck just has trouble keeping up with that some days. So, keep grinding, everybody. This deck is definitely a lot of fun to play, and once again, really good for newer returning players to be able to pick up and learn. And I just think, overall, it's a great way to join into the game. So, thank you guys so much for watching today. I'm pretty sure that's all I got for you. Remember to click all the links down below, or check out all the links in the description, and hit that like and subscribe button so you guys can continue to support me, because your support so far on this channel has just been insane. So, please keep it up. I love each and every single one of you. So, thank you so much again. Remember to have fun, and make your move. Peace out. I'm a love giver.